Next, take, put the eyeball where I want it to go. Just kind of outline it just a little bit. Then I'm gonna score up where I want the eyeball to go. Want to score these up really well so they stick together. Take one finger of water, just drip it on the eyeball. I'm going to take, push it together, squeezes out some of the water there. Just get a good seat. Then next, going to take and you always do the bottom first put the bottom on first and the top is going to go over like this then I'm going to take and use my thumb to smooth the eye down on the bottom Take this stuff off. Smooth all that eyebrow on there. Then I'm going to take and shape that. Smooth it all down. Now, I can make this eye angry. I can make it happy by adjusting the shape. Now, I can also take and change the expression by putting an eyebrow above it. You can have them be evil and intense, mild-mannered, happy. It's kind of all up to you. But once you put that on there, then we take, just outline where it's gonna be. Score it up. up the eyebrow a little water take push the eyebrow down we're making it a scary eye because we're coming into Halloween. Smooth all this in. Then I can take my wooden tool, come in here and smooth this area away. Smooth the lines away. Now, the other thing you can do you can also gently come in here and put in the lines. And then I know later I'm going to come back and maybe put in or put colored glaze in here. And I just want lines big enough to catch the glaze. Come in here and clean off all those little bits of clay and smooth them off.
and that's how you make a lifelike eye. And again, you can do variations on the theme. If you want the eye to come down a little farther, you just need to make the, uh, the tubes a little bigger as you go around it, or you could score this on. You can shape the eye, make it angry, happy. Really, it's up to you, okay? Now next, we're going to make cartoon eyes. So I take a pinch of clay, I'm going to take, roll it into a ball, and take, I'm going to cut it in half, now a lot of people make flat eyes, I think you need to make something with uh, some three dimensionality to it. So we've got two eyes here about the same size. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna flatten them down a little bit. Not a whole lot. And before I slip and score anything on, I'm gonna take them, put them on here and see how they look. All right, that's not bad. Then I'm gonna take Cut another one in half. I find working on them side by side keeps them about the same size. Now I'm going to push them down a little bit. Round them off. I'm going to put these guys on here like this. Finally, the last ball, clay. Whoopsie. Round that up. Flatten it a little bit. And I'm gonna put my pupils in here like this. Now what I tend to do with the cartoons is get it all worked out first before I score anything down. Okay, and I take a look at my character. Boy, he looks kind of crazy-eyed. And see if I want to change a little bit or if I want to flatten any of these eyes down. Then, to help start bringing it to life, I'm going to take some eyebrows okay. I'm gonna start shaping those a little bit And again, the eyebrows do not have to be symmetrical. We're gonna give them one of those, maybe Dwayne Johnson Rock raised eyebrows. If they're too long, you just pinch them down. this. If they're too three-dimensional, then all you could do is take them down, just smash them down a little bit. Try and keep them pretty close to the same size. What I do is try and get 
my character's face to be as close as I want it to be before I start scoring anything down. Now, variations, you can make these as thin or as thick as you would like, depending on what you're trying to go for. Um, the eyebrows, you can make them the same. You can make, like I made him kind of angry looking. You can make him kind of happy looking just as easily by bringing those eyebrows up. Okay, you can change the emotion. You can have them looking one direction you can make them cross-eyed again it's really kind of up to you now the thing i have to do is once i've decided where i want everything then i got to slip and score it all on there so i would take circle everything And then I start with the big pieces and then work to the little ones. Come in here, I'd score this up. And all this clay I'm pulling off here I'm just putting it on my uh, little pile of clay that I'm gonna recycle and recondition. Then I come in here, I'm gonna score up the eyebrow. Take just a finger of water, just a drop. I'm going to take, put that on there, squeeze it down, then I can start working on the other parts of the eyes. What I usually do is put everything together, then I'll go back through and start smoothing out all these construction lines because you're just going to. As you work with the clay, you're going to leave fingerprints and marks and stuff. So it's better to get it all put together, then go in with the finishing smoothing, and then go in with the textures last. Because otherwise, if you do the texture first, as you work with it, it's going to get um, smashed down, and you're going to have to redo it. Then I just score the back side of the eye. kind of funny the cartoon eyes are almost more work than the realistic eyes take a little water just drop that on there oops got it turned it's another reason to outline you know which way things go too Push that down, see how the water squirts out the top. Get all that squeezed in there really good. Good contact, no air bubbles. Then I can go ahead and do the pupil.
and finger. Take put the pupil in. Just squeeze it down till a little water gets squeezed out. And last is the pupil. I guess I did the iris first. Now comes the pupil. So not only am I going to use the co different color of the glazes to highlight this, but I'm using uh, the three-dimensionality of the clay to do this. Can take, put him in there like that. See how the water squirts out? All right, and then that is not going anywhere ever. Now, if you get it mashed down, you can always take and bring in something like this to put that line to define where the two surfaces meet to clean it up. And then I can come in here, smooth that area out. that down in there get in here and smooth this out I also use the needle for a lot of this you can take you can also move your sculpture out to the edge of the table so you can smooth that off. And that's how you do a cartoon eye, exactly like that. Then I would just have to do that whole process with this side if I want a nose, mouth, same kind of thing. And then, but the eyes, they're really important. They have a lot of expression for your piece.